I want to know how you decide what to focus on. What 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 how, what brought you to 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 this kind of this kind of strategy? Yeah, great question. So, uh, well, I, I think um, I mean if you kind of look at the um, mission and the theory of change of direct action everywhere, um, I think it's uh, you know obviously I think it's a pretty persuasive one. It's been the last six years of my life, and um, you know Wayne Shung in particular, one of DXE's co-founders. Uh, close friend of mine, best mentor I've ever had. Um, I, you know, talk to him on a daily basis. And, um, you know, what, what I think really adds up is that looking at the, the history of successful social movements is, is building a mass movement. So what's, what's it going to take to get people to take mass action? And so, it might, it might be kind of like a multiple step, like, okay, you get media attention, then people get outraged, then people, you know, get on a campaign and they, and they do, but that's, that's what it's all ultimately geared towards. Um, mm. You know, clicks on social media only matter to the extent that they further that donations, same thing, email, people sign up for our email list or whatever. It all needs, needs to be funneled towards that. Um, and you know, it's, it's tough. This is, you know, there's plenty of reasons to protest in this world and people are mm. going to be kind of human centric because that's <laughs> humans are tribal animals and they care. And there are plenty of things to care about that aren't animal issues, but mm. uh, that's, that's our ultimate orientation is, is towards mobilizing people. And we're, you know, doing, uh, you know, I think a Decent, you know, the best job. I mean, you know, if we had a million people marching in Washington, that would be us doing a really good job. But like, we're, I guess, doing it. I don't know how you define it. <laughs> how do you set the standards? <laughs> like, we're doing, I guess, the best job of the animal rights movement. Uh, we're, I mean, because we're the ones that are sort of focused on this mission. Um, and I mean, on that note, I would just emphasize to people like, this is like the thesis statement of everything I'm saying we all have way more power than we give ourselves credit to, which might sound cliche or whatever. I mean, the bottom line is for as much as people are like talking and people are active and people are posting on social media about politics, there are not actually that many people that are politically active that are on the ground, which is really unfortunate in the grand scheme of things. But it also means that the few people that are have an outsized impact. So really encourage people to, to get active, get, you know, talk to your local city council person, talk to people in your area, figure out what a United campaign is and like figure out the campaign and like push, push, push. Cause I've seen it so many times you, people are blown away by their own success when you actually like get dirty and go do something about it. This idea of building a mass movement, a mass community of activists, you say that you're the XC of the organization who are who are focusing on this. I suppose, I mean, I could be wrong about this, but what it, what it seems to me is that the the majority of activists in the community that, that I'm connected to are focused on creating individual change, trying to encourage individuals to change uh, their eating habits. So, I mean, what do you think about that that focus on on trying to get people to go vegan? Yeah, so I highly encourage um, addressing that exact point uh, and actually speaking of, of, uh, Wayne Shaw, who I was talking about, uh, and he's like slightly trying to live this one down, uh, boycott V if you just Google boycott veganism, Wayne Shung, and you'll find a couple of hater posts of people that didn't actually read his thing. But if you find the actual original article, he wrote boycott veganism that addresses this point exactly. And, um, you know, bottom line is social norms, social norms, social norms. It's the reason that people join a community and people are willing to go take drastic action and face criminal charges because they got people around them that are supporting them. And it's, it's a social norm in that circle that you're going to do this to be one person all by yourself. It doesn't matter how right you are. If, if you don't, if it's not the social norms around you, you can forget it. If you're in Iowa, have all the conversations in the world about animal rights, how bad animal ag is. Yep. 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 People nod, nod, nod. And then what they turn around and they're in Iowa still, and the norms are what they are. And find that person in six months, I don't know, their diet slightly changed or, you know, basically nothing is, is what I'm saying. So, you know, as much as human beings sort of, we like to tell ourselves and we all like to think that we are, um, you know, rational and looking at facts and figures and so on or whatever, social norms tell the tale. Everybody went along with slavery 200 years ago. Everybody's going along with animal agriculture today. It's not because there was any logic behind any of it to begin with, but 
it, it is what it is. And so, you know, as it results to, to individual outreach, it's a failed experiment. And I'm sorry, I wish it wasn't the case, but I mean, the number of vegans has been pretty steady uh, with this being the prevailing tactic over the past few decades. Um, and now maybe, I don't know, the, the, the survey data that's kind of out there is pretty sketchy or whatever, but it might be going up a little bit on the basis of these other issues. Not because people are increasing their overall support, their overall whatever for animal rights, but you know, environmental or what, for whatever other reasons. But you know, by and large, Unfortunately, individual outreach has been a failed experiment. Uh, going back to, to Wayne's experience, he was this, uh, you know, at the University of Chicago, and he just spent, I can't even remember how many hundreds of hours handing out however many hundreds of leaflets and vegan uh, cookies, chocolate chip cookies, because he had read like, oh, well, uh, you know, 1% or something like that of people that you hand a leaflet to, or you give a vegan sample, whatever to, are going to go vegan. So he does this, puts all these like thousands of hours in, for a semester of school and the enrollment in the vegan club at the University of Chicago decreased over that span of time. So I love you, all you animal rights people that are doing this. It's very intuitive to the whole go vegan thing. I totally get how it's intuitive. I was on board with that for a while. Um, I just really encourage people to take a sober look at the results. And yeah, I think you'll kind of come around to kind of where I've come around to. So here's my current take on this. And, and as always, I could always be be wrong, I suppose. Um, I do think there is value in, in encouraging people to make behavior changes, uh, partly because the, the millions of people around the world um, who aren't eating animal products or are reducing animal product consumption will affect the number of animals who are being bred into existence and therefore will uh, reduce suffering. Uh, but there's also psychological effects to consider as well. I mean, there's psychological evidence that if people uh, consume animal products, they then view they view animals um, to have lower mental faculty, faculties. So they may have less uh, concern for the well-being of animals. They think they're less sentient because of the, the fact that they're eating meat. I guess there's some cognitive distance going on there. Um, so it may be that we're, the people who are who had some kind of behavior change where they're reducing their consumption or eliminating their consumption, whether it's for health or the environment or for ethics, they then be then be more likely to become an activist, more likely to take the issue of, uh, of animal ethics seriously. However, uh, I do think that we have too much of a focus on individual change and there needs to be a marked shift in our focus towards institutional messaging. Um, I, I essentially agree with you. I guess I just want to um, acknowledge that, that there, there is value in it um, for the, the people who are spending time on it, and um, you know that it's it's not it's they're, they're, they're linked. It's not it's not black and white. Um, for example, my my flatmate here, um, I, I had a conversation with him at a, at a cube. He was a meat eater. He he went vegan. He spoke to his sister. Um, who also went vegan. She owned a restaurant, so the restaurant turned to vegan. Um, so you can kind of, by changing individuals, you can also change um, institutions and restaurants and it can have a broader impact. But I completely agree with you. There needs to be a shift um, for sure. And, and, and I, I, I think I agree with you maybe more than it might have come off as because I think you're exactly right about getting a foot in the door. And so, so what I think both of us are saying is what matters is collective action. What, what is ultimately gonna be the, the kind of mechanism for change is mass sustained collective action. And the vehicle to, to get there is, is to sort of make people feel good and, and sort of like a foot in the door to the movement. Whether that foot in the door is like, hey, okay, you're eating a little bit less meat or whatever, that that's, can be a totally viable foot in the door. Um, I find that a, a little bit challenging because it is it, it it's sort of like there's kind of like a little bit of a weird awkward connotation of like still sort of negative when they're like still eating meat five days a week or whatever. What I found easier to do the same same psychological mechanism of a foot in the door is like you can already find common ground. I was on a podcast, mind blowing in multiple ways. I was on a podcast with Ben O'Brien, who's this uh, the 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 Hunters Collective, and it's called like the Meat Eater Podcast, like the biggest or, you know, one of the biggest hunting. And anyway, we found so much common ground, certainly not about his eating habits, but about, um, football. <laughs> well, yeah, but, but about, about him, you know, it's like people can agree with you on so much. It's like, yeah, you don't like animal cruelty. You don't want animals to be cruelly harmed. You think this industry is all messed up. And 
it's like, okay, well, you are, that's already kind of is a foot in the door in a way. It's like, you're, you're, you're on board with me. It's like, yeah, I know this, the world is a horrible place and what kind of pesticides and exploitative labor and whatever landed my food on my plate. I don't support that in my head. Like in principle, I don't support that. I'm just kind of existing in this system and I'm focused on systemic change. I'm not going to be a perfect individual. I'm not even trying to be a perfect individual. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to create systemic change. Similarly, um, you know, when I talked to the Iowa select farms whistleblower, you know, early on, it's like, I want to be this guy's buddy. You know, I want, I mean, he, and he was working like his head, his, he was so motivated. He was just like one of us for four weeks. This guy who has pigs in a pen in his backyard who mm -hmm. drives pigs in a slaughterhouse truck for a living. This guy was as motivated as any of us all night texting, calling, here's where they're at. Here's where they're moving them. Here's like whatever. And it, you know, and it started off, we had a, you know, some phone conversations and it was, he was giving us a fake name and we thought he might, we thought literally 50, 50 shot. This guy's a plant that's trying to like get us on some sort of like hacking charges because he's given us his login info or some shit. Um, you know, but he, he totally, he got the foot in the door. Like he asked us, you know, he's like, Hey, well, so what's you guys just take on, you know, free range pigs, you mm -hmm. know? I think if I would have told him the thing that a lot of animal advocates told him, he would have been a lot less motivated about it. And, you know, my answer was like, I don't, I don't think it's great. And I also don't mm. think that a lot of what puts my food on my table is great either. But I also think that what I'm doing and what you're doing is a huge service to the world mm. that dwarfs whatever individual consumption concerns there are. And I think you're a good person with your heart and mind in the right place. And he, he was in. Right. Yeah, no, he, he's an interesting case study i suppose what what could be perhaps damaging to what we, what we're trying to achieve uh, our movement is that a lot of people seem to think that you can't do anything for animals or be an activist unless you're vegan because then you're you're a hypocrite um i was talking to, to jc reese who's the first person i had on this podcast who works for sentience institute um and he was talking about how he was doing a march and, and someone came over and uh, and he was like i really love what you're doing and jc asked him to join the march and the guy said, Oh, I can't, I'm not a vegetarian. Um, the, the thing is the sentience Institute, um, they've done, they've done research to look at the, the views of the U S public. And they found something, something around 48% of the general public would, or even, I think it was 50%, um, would support a ban on factory farming. And then around 48% to 50% would support abolishing slaughterhouses. There is support for institutional change. People, will support us, but they won't change their individual behaviors because in the, in the same questionnaire, um, people were asked if, um, whether they think eating animals is a personal choice, should be a personal choice. And the vast majority say yes. So I mean, these, these, right. So these results seem very contradictory. Oh, no, I, I, and I, I'm, I've, I've talked to JC a few times. I've, I cite those stats all the time. And it's, it's, I think it exactly highlights the point. I mean, imagine, you know, let's say you go to a Black Lives Matter protest and you're just like, God, all, you know, George Floyd, you know, the whole thing like this is just so horrible. We need to speak up. And it's like, oh, you know, and the first person you see there, the organizer of the march or whatever, you know, I was like, oh, that's really cool that you're here. Um, so have you um, pledged to only buy from Black owned businesses yet? Uh, and they're like, wait, what? No, I don't know. And they're like, oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's totally fine. You'll get there one day. You'll get there one day. Just keep, uh, you know, it's it's totally fine. And what you're hearing in your head is like, oh, it's totally not fine. I'm not part of the cool kids club, you know, but they don't have that. Like the animal mm. rights movement is unique in that way that we've sort of like set up this sort of like exclusive club. Mm. Oh, yeah, this this club. And I mean, if, if veganism, it, it's, it's just so convoluted and so corporatized and there's just like so much, if it actually meant what it should mean and what it was originally intended to mean, then it could be a useful tactic to say like, hey, this is a social statement, a political statement in support of anti-speciesism, but it, it's not, then it becomes like, oh, is it cruelty free? No, it's not cruelty free. Mm -hmm. Whatever your body is not cruelty free, you know, so it's, it's just, you know, and so it's to the point, I just don't really utter the V word. Uh, right. you know, and know. It's, it's important to note here that by, by saying this, that you, that you want to be more inclusive, it's not saying that you think it's morally acceptable to buy animal products. If you go for your life buying animal products, you're, you're going to cause a lot of animal suffering. Um, but what's important is that focus on effectiveness for the animals. 
Um, and in order to, to reach the goal that we want, we need as many people as possible. It, it, it's, it's morally unacceptable to, to embrace speciesism. And so it's like, you know, it, it just gets really slippery when you say, you know, in terms of your individual choices, like, okay, you know, maybe we could say like, oh, is it, it's unacceptable to purchase animal products. Like, okay, is it unacceptable to purchase uh, quote unquote vegan product that we know is heavily has all these negative externalities. Like do right. I have to grow plants in my yard? I don't know. Like yeah, I don't yeah, know exactly no, where to draw I, that line. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think you've got, you've got a good point there. And I suppose when I, on reflection, I think when I, it, it makes more sense to just to say, I think it's bad to do an action that causes suffering. Uh, and I think it's good to do an action that reduces suffering. Um, and when we're talking about is something morally morally wrong, or or is something a moral obligation? Uh, it gets a bit more a bit more difficult um, trying to define what these things are because we're all living very flawed lives where we're we're, we're doing actions that cause suffering. Um, but but c- certainly we can say that you know buying animal products is an action. It's depending on the animal product as well because there's different degrees of suffering for each product. But if you're going to go out and buy chicken and eggs every day, you're going to be putting more suffering into the world. When we talk about institutional change versus individual change, often it can it can feel a little bit abstract. So I suppose the the activists who are who are currently doing lots of sort of Cuba truths, for example, with anonymous sort of voiceless or going out and doing street interviews, I suppose one of the things they can do is start trying to create more activists, focus on creating a, a community of activists, getting more people involved in the animal rights community. Uh, what else are some tips you think for for like this this shift that we want to see? How do people actually do that in practice? create that shift. Yeah. So, so, I mean, I, I think if we could get to sort of step one there where people internalize in their head and that's, that's what they're thinking about. It's not, you know, get somebody to go to, um, you know, what the 22, uh, you know, whatever, you know, to go vegan like that, just, I just really think just, just eliminate that as a goal. Somebody says, yeah, I'll check out the website. They walk away. Like, let's just call that nothing. Let's just call that accomplishing nothing. Sorry. Love y'all. I, I just don't think that's going anywhere. Yeah, I would disagree with you that, it, that it's accomplishing nothing. Uh, and I can definitely, I can certainly come up with like examples. Um, but I, but like, let's just, yeah, let's talk about, I mean, I agree with you that it needs to be a shift. Uh, I think we're on the same, I think we're in the same place. <laughs> yeah, you're just being dramatic in your language. In terms of, yeah, I mean, in, in terms of, of, of Lucas Walker, you know, and Iowa Select Farms, that's yeah. a thousand or 10,000 right. people, you know, for sure, they, they, for they sure. say they're going to check out the website or, you know, for something sure. like that. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, get those big, make friends, like be, be a fucking cool person and Mm. make friends and get them excited about it. And I mean, I'm in, you know, and I'm in a privileged situation here. I live in Berkeley, California and, you know, and so on, but, you know, to get to the place where Mm. on Friday nights, like I'm hanging out with activists and we're like having beers and we're like brainstorming Mm. our next cockamamie activism Mm -hmm. scheme. So just like, it's fully integrated. It's not like this giant laborious sacrifice and everyone around you thinks you're weird and mm. it's just like it's just weighing on you to like oh god i'm gonna buy oat milk and everyone's gonna look at me weird and it costs more and like i don't even know what are the environmental effects does it even make sense like dude make it cool make it like your friend group and it all just like just yeah, happens yeah. naturally get people involved, get, get their contact information, stay in touch and try and get them to, to join the community, essentially build, build a community. 